That's a good shot. That's a good shot. Mm -hmm. I like it, dude. I'm impressed. The water of espresso is really fun and really fascinating. However, it can also be really intimidating and get really expensive really fast. That's a lot of reallys. So when looking at some other ways to make espresso, you have some manual espresso makers. Now, in this category, you can get into espresso a lot cheaper and with a little more work, but you can have some fun here as well and really make some great espresso. Now, I've been looking into some manual espresso makers for quite some time now. Haven't quite pulled the trigger on one. However, conveniently, Storesa reached out and asked if I wanted to review their product. And they're also the sponsor of this video, but I'm gonna be unbiased here. Now, I usually use my Gaggio Classic whenever I'm making espresso and also take my AeroPress with me when I'm making drinks on the go and most of the time at home as well. However, that might change. So when I got the product in the mail, the unboxing was a little bit of a cumbersome process and the instructions on the package aren't the most clear. So this is a small manual espresso maker and it's actually also touted to be pretty portable according to them. And it also does have some great extraction numbers at 18 to 20%. So the gold cup stand. And now it does this all generating about 15 to 20 bars of pressure. That's a lot of pressure. Now, before I get into that, I wanna kind of explain why that's a lot of pressure. So if you're new to espresso, some common numbers you'll see in espresso is nine bars and even six and a half bars. And you'll see that a lot in, in cafe settings and specialty coffee. And so nine is pretty standard across the board. And so when I first saw these numbers, I figured it might have a pressurized portafilter. filter. The reason why something usually has to generate that much pressure is be, to overcome the pressurized port filter and in order for water to come out. Now we'll visit that a little later. Now this product is about $100 and the build quality isn't bad. Uh, there are some, there are a lot of plastics in this build, but they are heavy duty and really they don't feel like they're going to break. And the important parts are metal. Now I'm okay with this one because of the price of $100, but also if metal was used in this design, it would have gotten really heavy. Now this isn't as light as something like the AeroPress that I use pretty often for travel. And so this would have been a pretty beefy product if it was using metal. After all, again, I use the AeroPress a lot and this thing is plastic and has been through hundreds of cups. Now, before I get into making a cup of coffee, let's talk about this port filter. Upon inspection, opening this thing up, it turns out it is a pressurized port filter. And I get why they did that. Now, it looks like this project is positioned more around uh, travel, coffee, and also some more entry-level espresso as well. So typically, whenever you have a more entry-level espresso product, you will find a pressurized portafilter. This is because espresso does require pretty fine grinds. Most people don't have grinders to be able to grind like that if they're just getting into espresso. A lot of times, people don't have grinders, period. So what this pressurized portafilter allows you to do is not be as hard on the grind. You can have a coarser grind and due to the pressure, be able to get more extraction in order to create a shot out of there. Now this isn't everyone's cup of tea, but I wanted to give it a chance anyways and still try it out. So with that in mind, let's go drink some coffee. Okay, just got here at the uh, little coffee pop-up, but I'm gonna test the, um, I'm gonna test the Storesso, probably be able to dial this thing in and see how it's how it's tasting and also be able to compare it to something like the Gaggio, uh, a really good entry level uh, espresso machine. Okay, so we're gonna be taking a closer look at all of this, um, the Storesso, and I'm gonna go ahead and brew a shot with it and compare it to something like an actual espresso machine. And now the reason why I'm doing it here is because I wanna have everything at my disposal to be able to control my variables. Um, and then take those learning things, tell you what I'm finding, and then I can also apply those to whenever I use this thing on the go. Um, instead of just trying to guess and you know, maybe make some bad coffee while I'm out doing something or at work. So while we're here, I'm actually gonna be running our bean through it. Um, I know how it tastes and how I, I like it and how we've, we've dialed it in with, with our espresso, um, with the gaja here. and. I'm gonna try to get as close to that as I can with this. And if I can get somewhat close to it, then that's great, that's awesome. Cause then I'm gonna enjoy that. 
And I've already put uh, some different beans through its paces here and had some, um, so far, some pretty solid results. Um, I just want to see, you know, getting espresso that I've already liked and how I can kind of compare it to this. Okay, so I got the, the grounds in here. I got about 17.8 grams in, and according to, to Tampit, you use this. This is, in my opinion, not the best experience because it's kind of soft. Um, so just press it down with this. But I guess it's great if it's meant to be used on the go or in a pinch. Um, I might have ground too fine, actually. I mean, it says use something more like table salt. Um, I think this is a little too fine. And to note is that because of the pressure, the 15 bars of pressure that it accumulates, I think this might be too fine. Okay, so I'm going to put my hot water in here. And I'm going to shoot for, and probably looking at the line here, probably about 100, 110 milliliters of water, which is about 110 grams. Screw this on. And real quick, I want to go ahead and weigh that out, zero that out. Okay, so remember 17 or so, 17.8 grams of coffee in and see what we get out here. And we got some espresso flowing out. So we do did have a little bit of channeling there, it came out of one side. Okay, judging this, this is still a pretty big shot, but we'll see how it tastes. Okay, so 57 grams out. So that's that's pretty that's a pretty big shot. Traditional espresso you're looking at, you know, maybe one and a half, two and a half grams, uh, or one and a half, two and a half times its its weight and, and mass. Um, so this would have been closer to um, you know, 30 to 40 grams out. Um, and it's a little above that, not by a lot. And again, that's kind of due to my water, but let's taste it and see how it is. That's not bad. Even though I ground a little finer than I thought it would necessarily need to be. Um, that's actually not bad at all. There is a, a hint more uh, acidity than than my normal recipe, um, and body is not bad. That's kind of one of the things that gets lost when you're bringing bigger shots is your body of texture. If you're near that thing, if you're mixing with milk and stuff, and I guess at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. Um, but if you're drinking straight espresso by itself, something you might want to consider. But okay, I'm gonna finish cleaning this up and see if I can make an adjustment to my recipe. Um, it's good. I think I can get it a little better. I think this shot is, is much better than the first one I did. There's still that rich sweetness and I'm, I'm getting some of the, a little bit of the bitterness back and it's not as acidic as the other one. And it's extracted uh, a little better. Um, the, out this time, 47 grams. So I'm not sure what differently I did there. The water is the same, but um, it, this is a much better shot. I pretty much pumped it up about four notches, so a little bit more coarser on um, this this grinder here. It's um, it's a pretty good shot. I I really like that. Okay, so now I'm gonna brew a shot on the the Gaggia just to be able to compare it a little better, um, since uh, I can kind of get a, just a better taste comparison instead of trying to go off of memory. Okay, so here's my shot here. So I had a 28 second shot, 38 out, so a one to two ratio. And it's, um, let's see where it goes. Now I think overall, a little bit more body to this than 
a little overall more balanced, but I'd be happy with either one. Couldn't hurt George now. The shot's already cold, but not bad. They're pretty close. So that's a really good sign. It's it's brewing really well. Now my thoughts might change once I convert this over to a nine bar, and maybe I'll update, do a little update after this. But that's a pretty good shot. So after some tweaking, I tuned it down to about 110 milliliters of water with an 18 gram basket of coffee. Now this came out closer to my one to two, one to two and a half range that I typically enjoy drinking. Today we're here, we got a perfect opportunity to test this product. I'm helping out a friend of mine, Emily, owner of Marble Slab, to make an avocado and upgrade their experience a little bit. So I thought I'd test this out so we can mess with some recipes and also have some ice cream while we're doing it. Let's go ahead and get this thing set up. Hi, I'm Emily. I am own Marvel Sab on Alameda, and I'm excited to uh, collab with Josiah with Grind. <laughs> okay, so now we're gonna choose our ice cream, essentially. So let's go do that. Not like this, <laughs> only out of a tub in my freezer. <laughs> that's, that's hard. I always tell people you don't want to arm up on my employees. That doesn't work into that. Okay, that should be good. Okay. Did it. So we have our shot of espresso here, and we're going to pour it over. Look at that. You know, I don't think I've ever had an avocado. Really? As much as I love ice cream and coffee. And now we get into cleaning up. Probably the biggest weakness of this device. Okay, so this is this is the fussy part. It's I find it difficult to clean. Now um, if I if I tried to go ahead and take everything apart like this, there's one a lot of water left in here. So there's gonna be a lot of water left in the top. And if I release this, the pressure gets released, which then creates an issue here because I can't get the water out of, that's left in here. Now their instructions say to essentially loosen the pressure regulator, which will then loosen the um, overall pressure in the system and then press on any remaining water to get what resembles a, a dry puck. Um, sort of like you'd get out of, you know, pulling a shot of espresso or even an arrow press. When you press it all the way through, you kind of have that dry puck there at the end. Okay, so once this goes, you hear pressure get released from the system. And now some more water is leaking through here. And there's still some water remaining left inside the chamber. I'm gonna dump that out. But essentially now I can go ahead and unscrew that with ease. And there might, yeah. I can already feel it. There is a lot of water remaining inside of the system here. Okay, so this isn't the messiest one I've had. I've definitely had some worse ones, but it's gonna be like having a really dirty puck of espresso, except without the ease of still knocking it out. Now this thing isn't scolding hot at whenever you're done you know, pressing or knocking it out, so you're okay holding it like this. It's just, a, a little dirty and slight annoyance um, if you're used to working around it which I guess at the end of the day I'll get used to it I'll know to just dump the water out unscrew this knock this out have a napkin or something on hand rinse it off I mean it is what it is 
So after talking with the creator of Stereso, she mentioned that some devices, the pressure regulator would open up and some wouldn't. And so I think mine was one of the ones that wouldn't at first, but until I took the whole thing apart, put it back together, then it was a little easier for me to pop out. Now, the reason why the cleanup is a little bit messier is because it is a pressurized portafilter, filter, but it isn't all bad. After I did get the hang of the cleanup, I'm starting to be able to create a dry puck and have, a, have an easier cleanup. Now, I think learning how to do this is pretty important with this device because one, messy cleanups are fun, and two, if you're traveling, you might not have access to everything you need to, to deal with a messy cleanup. You might not have napkins, towels, water, things like that in order to rinse this thing out. You might just be on the go, need to make coffee, dump it out, and get on with your day. So with all that being said, this is a pretty fun product. Honestly, one I would happily buy and recommend, and I'm actually gonna get another one for the office. Even though I know this is meant to be a travel one, I just don't wanna carry more stuff with me back and forth, so I'm gonna leave one there. It doesn't take up a lot of counter space. It's pretty great. So I have actually really been enjoying the espresso. I've been getting out of it. I've been using it for my Americanos. I have let friends taste it, and, and everyone has seemed to also enjoy it as well. And I personally prefer something like this over a cheap semi-automatic espresso machine. The reason why is because the budget is spread so thin having to have electronic parts and, and everything. And on here, it's just a manual machine. And so you can have a better build with better longevity, in my opinion. I'm a sucker for less parts to fail. Now I would love an option to have a naked or unpressurized port filter in order to, to have more control over my coffee like I would with my espresso machine. However, it's not a deal breaker and I'm still gonna to continue to drink coffee out of it, use it and enjoy it. The downsides aren't enough for, to deter me away from this, which really is just a cleanup. So once again, thank you Storesso for sponsoring this video and thank you for watching. If you have any specific questions, things I didn't address in here, let me know. Comment down below and feel free to watch more of our videos. If you also would like to pair this with the manual grinder, I just did a review on the Easy Presso JX. In the meantime, thanks for watching, enjoy your coffee, and I'll see you in the next one.